Hello, Phil Collins here. And have you heard the news that there's good rock in tonight? Because we talk with Phil Collins, Eddie Grant, Eraser, Talk Talk, all on show 283 of Good Rockin' Tonight, The London Sessions. Brought to you by Molson Canadian Rocks, what music's all about. Hello and welcome to the second show of Good Rockin' Tonight's London Sessions. You know, it is really hard to believe. Here it is, mid-November. Look at this fabulous weather. Tonight, we're going to be talking with some great people. First of all, Eddie Grant, who was, if you'll recall, the very first interview that Good Rockin' Tonight ever did. Also, we'll be talking with the incredible Phil Collins. He'll be chatting about his movie, Buster. Add to that, we talk talk with talk talk. How have you managed to avoid uh, not only duplication or the dreaded formula, but you've also managed to stay away from any prevailing trends of the time? Sure, so. well, that's, that's just a consequence of taking so long to make these albums. I mean, it's quite hard to be a part of any trend if you're sort of two years between each album. But yeah. you wouldn't anyways, would you? No. No, definitely not. No, we just, we just found ourselves in a really fortunate position, you see, from sort of like the, 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 su the, su the success, if you like, and the support we were given from the It's My Life album. It's, it's just enabled us to make The Colour of Spring in, in, in this one, you know, in, in, in increasingly more in ideal terms. Mm -hmm. You know, the album's only ever been the important thing, and it's just like now we find ourselves in a position where we don't have to... Do, do anything that, that we don't want to do. The only thing we do is what we do want to do, which is make the record. This album, what, what we've tried to do here is, is put together two things that don't normally exist on record, that I've never actually seen exist anywhere on album before. Which, which all, all, always, for me, you, you, have, you have these two areas of music which, which sit apart from each other. One, one is this thing with just sort of spontaneity and freedom, and the other thing is, is this thing of having a, a very textured depth of arrangement. And what we've tried to do with this album is just bring these two things together for, for once. And, and you know, the, the, that, that is why it takes so long, because the, the approach to making this album is, is one where everyone who comes and plays on this album is given absolute freedom, has no direction at, at all in, in what they play. We'll, we'll play maybe for days, and then you t just take a few seconds, and then you assemble an arrangement from that, so you end up with something which is very tightly constrained, but everything within it that has been played is, is, is completely free and completely loose. So that what, what you do, you just talk in, in the absolute basics and the fundamentals of what music should be, which is just in its attitude and not in its technique. And that kind of intensity does take time, doesn't it? Are you happy with the result? Yeah. And Eddie, welcome to Good Rockin' tonight. Yes, thank It has you. been uh, five years since we last talked. As a matter of fact, you were the very first interview uh, that Good Rockin' ever had when we went on the air in 83. Correct. What has that done for your career? Hey, I'm up on top of the building, I'm up on top of the world, must have done something. <laughs> Here we are in London, and uh, where's home for you? I live in Barbados. Okay. What brings you here? I also lived for a long time in England, and uh, I've been touring uh, Europe. Uh, we've done six weeks going around most of the capitals, and uh, we've had a great time. It's been a while since you've been uh, on the road playing live. Yes, um, about five years since I've done my last tour, wow. and about two years since I last played in England. A little rusty? Nah, I never get rusty. I, <laughs> I work too hard for that. <laughs> the latest album is File Under Rock. Uh, I'm just curious, is there any significance to the title of that album? Well, people have always been trying to nail me with a category, and uh, I maintain that my music is much too broad to be called reggae or pop or black music or whatever it is because it transcends all the barriers. So um, I've decided to have a dig at those people who've been trying to file me on the reggae and say, file me on the rock. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to file me on the Eddie Grant. <laughs> Your music is very, very diversified. You draw from all areas. I'm wondering what the songwriting process is. It, it's more than the process. It's the way of life. I've lived in uh, Guyana, which is in the Caribbean, when I was very small. I've lived in Europe, which again is very cosmopolitan. I've lived in Africa. I've been influenced by uh, American music. And so after you've gone through that kind of uh, potpourri of, of musical styles, you must play something that's rather strange. And I do play something that's 
rather strange. <laughs> I wouldn't call it strange, but it's great that you can draw from all those, uh, from all those aspects. I think it makes life a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. What well, can you tell me about the single Joanna? Joanna, um, it has become a very important milestone in my life and my career. And it actually happened quite by accident, the song, because I was working on uh, the album File on the Rock, which did not include Joanna at the time. And my synthesizer broke down, uh, so I decided to go into the house and leave Glenn Johansson, who was the engineer who was working with me, to look after the synth for me. When I came back uh, into the house, there was this program on South Africa and how the apartheid system really affects all of us outside of South Africa. And it moved me. Uh, and when I left there to go back into the studio, I didn't feel like working on the song I was working on before, so I said, then put on a fresh tape and let me see what I can do. And I started strumming around and this song came up just like that. You know, when you talk about Phil Collins, you're talking about one incredible performer. He's been in the business over 20 years. We all know about his feats with Genesis and as a solo performer. His movie soundtrack themes have done incredible success like uh, Against All Odds and One More Night, just to name a few. Well, while we're talking about movies, let's talk about Phil's latest accomplishment. He stars in Buster. Phil Collins. Welcome to Good Rockin'. Well, thank you very much for having me. You're a man of many hats, boy. I tell you, you sing, you act, uh, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. I'm wondering, if, is there any unfulfilled ambitions for Phil Collins? Um, well, you know, this film world has just opened up to me, really. And uh, I really had a great time doing it. So there, there are all kinds of ambitions inside that world that I would like to um, be part of. And I'd love to be in a film with Nicholson, for instance. Um, Jessica Lange. James Stewart. Why oh, Jessica hero. Lang? Why well, Jessica Lang? I can't think of one reason. Um, I'd love to do films with my heroes. You know, I'd love to work with my heroes. And I have musically worked with some of my heroes. And uh, obviously this film thing just opens up a whole new area of, of, uh, of life to me. So, but, but apart from music um, and films, rather, I don't, I don't really have any strong ambitions that I can really call to mind that are the things that I'd love to do that I haven't been able to do. Because, you know, I'm very, very lucky. You know, life is uh, constantly sort of pretty much one big surprise, one after the other. And things keep, <laughs> things keep coming to me. Uh, and I sort of say, yeah, I haven't done that before. I'll have a go at that. So the element of surprise is usually the best way to take it. Luck, you know. The, the latest movie out right now and the latest effort of Phil is, is Buster. And I'm curious, first of all, have you ever met Buster? And what did he think about you playing him? Yes, I've met him. Uh, many, many times. In fact, we're now pals, you know. Um, I met him on the last night of the Genesis tour, which was about a year ago, over a year ago, last July. And uh, he came because he was a bit of a fan and his daughter was a bit of a fan. So they came and also we were doing the film, so it made sense we met at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we met during the course of the film and uh, I spent a week with him in Mexico while we were shooting the end of the film. And we've become pals. We go to soccer matches and he's been to my house. Some, for my daughter's birthday party, for instance, he came down with his whole family. So we're good pals now. He's a very nice guy. He's not the archetype criminal. Who is Buster? Let's get to that first. Buster Edwards was, um, he, he now sells flowers. He has a flower store and has done for the last 13 years outside Waterloo Tube Station. Waterloo Station, not Tube Station. It's um, Big State, one of the famous London stations. And uh, he was part of the great train robbers part of the great train robbery in 1963, one of the great train robbers, and there were about 17 of them. And three or four have become sort of world famous and more infamous. Uh, one is Ronnie Biggs, of course, who's on the run still in Rio. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's also a couple of other ones, that, are, that are Bruce Reynolds and Buster Edwards, that have become sort of faces since the crime. And uh, the film is really about him, Buster, and his wife, June. Uh, they, whilst all this robbery was going on and before and after uh, this the film traces their their story because they've been married like they met when they were 18 and they're still married now 35 years later and uh, what with all the pressures that the robbery put on that relationship but being on the run etc uh, it's an interesting story and uh, that's what the film's about now was Buster happy with the part that you played out apparently there? yeah he says that I've got him down pretty well Right. Uh, maybe not as snappy a dresser as he was at the time, but uh, and he's got he's got a lot more hair than I have. 
you still got a full head of silver, silver hair and it's 50 odd, so. We're talking with the real Buster. Very pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. I, you, have you seen the movie yet? Yes, I have. I've seen it twice. And what do you think? Um, it's quite difficult to see a movie about yourself, obviously, but I think they've done a very good job on it. What do you think about Phil Collins doing you? Um, I've got very friendly with quite good friends now, Phil Collins, and funny enough, um, we do look alike. I mean, I know there's this thing about his hair, they, but seriously, <laughs> we, we've got something in common. I mean, we seem to stand at it. I like when we're having our photo taken and uh, talking. So we? you're happy with the role he played with you? Oh, yes, very happy. If you had your druthers and another role was offered to you, uh, would you have any preference as to what it would be? I would try not to do anything like Buster, obviously, because I've done Buster and that kind of part, South London sort of wide boy, if you like. Um, so the next film I do, and I, there will be other films, because I really want to do more, I think I'm OK at it and I enjoy doing it. I would try and do something, that, anything else that's not like Buster. So it really leaves, the, you know, the whole world still open to me in terms of what kind of film parts. But I'd like to do comedy. I'd like to um, also like to do a very, very serious straight part. So people would say, hey, this guy can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, at the moment, people are saying, well, he's just acting himself in Buster. Mm -hmm. Which I tell you is a little bit of an insult. But um, <laughs> no, but it is acting, you know, I mean, it's, I was being asked every day to do different things that I've never done before. So it was a challenge and I, I enjoy the challenge and I enjoy any kind of challenge. Uh, it's not taking the place of music at all. I mean, the next thing on my list is to do a solo album, which I'll do in February, start in February, and it will probably come out at the end of the summer. Uh, and then after that, I'll do a film if there's a good script. If there's not a good script around that I like, then I'll do a tour, you know. I'll do a tour anyway, but it's a question of whether it happens before a film or after a film. Any offers? For films? Yeah. Um, there's been some scripts, but nothing... Of course, it's inevitable I'm going to get the Buster, the evil of Buster, the son of Buster, Buster Strikes Back. That's what I'm going to get given. <laughs> Buster's not dead yet. Right. But of course, there will be no... Um, I mean, I don't miss any literally Buster remakes, but just um, parts like that. Right. So I, I don't really want to do anything like that. I'd rather stretch myself into another area. So uh, nothing really has set the world on fire yet. But it's early days, you know. I mean, the film isn't even out in North America yet, so... So, Buster, tell me, did you get any money from, uh, from the Buster movie? Uh, no, not really. I got 500 pounds. They borrowed me stole, so I had a little touch out there. Oh. Not quite as much as I got off the robbery, but it wasn't too bad. OK. Looking back over a period of time, are there any highlights that come to mind? If you go back three years, you got Live Aid in my album, my last album which was, I mean, my album did so well, the last one, that that was a big high because you realize how many people you're reaching. And the Live Aid concert obviously was a big thrill being part of that. Um, just, just almost, I think what I did with the Concord thing in retrospect kind of linked the two events in Philadelphia and London together. So I was very proud of that. Um, but uh, I think the film in the last couple of years, because I mean, to be honest, it's been almost a year and a half since we've Genesis finished touring. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple of years, I think the film is definitely a highlight. I mean, to me, I, I'm 37 and I've been playing drums since I was five, and I've never really wanted to do anything else. And although I did a little bit of acting when I was a teenager, this is suddenly a whole new world to me. And it's very exciting to have that whole world open up uh, at a point where, you know, you figured that you'd, uh, you knew what you were going to be doing. You know, right. like, music is what I do, producing, singing, writing, Genesis, whatever. Suddenly to have that whole other area open up and it to be fresh and exciting and nothing to do with music, that's a tremendous buzz for me. Do you take that on as kind of a challenge too, Phil? Yeah, really. I mean, I think you need to put things, you know, tripwires in front of yourself and challenges. Otherwise, you don't, you don't spread, you know, you don't, um, you don't uh, enlarge the person, yeah. sort of uh, spread your capabilities around. And I, and I, if I'd have fallen flat on my face with the film, I'd say, well, a good experience. I had a challenge and I didn't rise to it. But I enjoyed it and I think I'm pretty good in it. So, I mean, I don't know how good I am in it. I read the reviews and I've seen them come out all right, so I presume I did all right. But um, it's definitely given me the bug to do more. And so uh, I shall be.